Hello YouTube artist, I'm Kelly Hernick and welcome to In The Studio. Today, I am bringing you something weird and wacky. I am using this book. I'm playing in my sketchbook. Are you ready to have some fun? Let's go. Today I'm gonna to be sharing a couple new things that I've been playing around with. I've got some new handmade watercolors by Addison and Sedgwick on Etsy. And then I've got this collage suit bird nerd book. And then some new and expensive watercolor brushes that I am really loving lately. I bought these paints because the names are just so charming. There is Hot Dog, Macintosh, Brayburn, Golden Delicious, Aren't those fun names? When I saw Hot Dog, I knew I had to order. <laughs> I just was like so interested in that color. And it really is a lovely color. And then this book I saw online. I don't remember who I saw this on YouTube, but it is a really, really cool book. And I'll tell you how I'm using it. I am using it for inspiration, for color, for texture, and for just weirdness. I love this book. The new brushes I'm going to be sharing with you are by Artify. Let's see if I can find a big Artify. There you go, Artify. So I have a round here, a cat's tongue, and this little one is a liner. And look at those points. I know they're beautiful, aren't they? So we're gonna have fun with this. Now this is three brushes out of a set of 12. And if you can believe this, this set is under $12. I know, right? But I have to tell you, you have to like soft brushes, not stiff, bouncy, bouncy ones. These are more like a kind of quill brush. So they hold a lot of water, but they also make the paint glide on beautifully. But if you are used to stiff, firmer brushes, you probably won't like these because these are a lot softer. Let me share some of the pages inside Bird Nerd that I really, really love. They're meant for collage, so you can tear them up, use them in your artwork. You really, if you have questions about the copyright, it says to write to them. But I think for painting, they are great because it's a lot of inspiration here. I'm gonna just show you a couple pages that I really, really love. First of all, the birds here. Look how fun they are with the glasses and the hats and wearing the ties. I just really like the charm of this. There's some steampunk pieces in here as well, which is probably why I bought this book. I love steampunk. There is a lot of birds, feathers, eggs in here where they're realistic birds, but then there are also some really fun ones with glasses and crowns. Look, they have boots on their feet. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at these legs. I just really love this. Now I want you to omit the birds here and just look at the color palette. You've got this great aqua, you've got this kind of green, you've got this orange and red, a dark green here, but look how nice they play together. Isn't that really lovely? Now, when was the last time you painted with a palette like that? I haven't. I love the idea of the aqua, the orange, and the red together. I really like that color combination. I'll be playing with that for sure. So you can see here's some realistic eggs. Here's some birds with just different glasses and eyes and shapes. <laughs> now think about this page. Look at this page with all its soft muted colors. Now look at that palette that that provides. Isn't that beautiful? I love this little dark corner here. So what would you make with that color palette? I know, I just wanna rip all these apart and start mixing in my sketchbook for sure. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Again, it's that very soft muted color palette, but isn't it lovely? A little brighter one. A little deeper one. I mean, look. It's all these swans with these flower backgrounds, but yet they're giving you so much difference in tone and mood and everything. And that is the reason that I bought this. As she was flipping the pages, I was like, oh! I've got to have this. I've got to have this just for the palette. So I'm going to skip forward. They've got some squares. They've got some people with the bird beaks. They've got beautiful prints like this. Now something like this, think about that. If you did 
a bird and a branch and some background like that with just one color. So think of this done in purples or greens or browns or right now fall colors in the reds, the oranges, the golds. Wouldn't that be really nice? And it's really just taking a simple design like a branch and a bird and just creating it in one color. Bright colors. I mean, look at that palette if you had to do something there. I really like the hat and his head up here. Let me bring that closer so you can see all those amazing colors. Isn't that fun? <laughs> And one of the things that I really loved inside this book is the texture. And this is where there's some steampunk things where they've got different owls coming in, the glasses, the watches, there's gears, there's all kinds of really cool things. But I want you to pay attention to the texture and the layering here. Look at on these owls. Just look at all that, how it looks paper cut, how it looks pasted over here. Can you imagine painting something with those kind of layers and texture? I mean, look at his, his vest right here. Look at just streaks of color. So imagine doing fun things with the coloration and then coming in with a dark stripe to really define those little edges. I think that's a beautiful thing to explore in your sketchbook. And look at this, the feathers. Look down here how they're all little different patterns where you could take a dark marker or pencil or paint and really define those as well. This is the texture I want to explore today. It kind of reminds me of like a crazing or something on an old piece of glass. You know how it's just speckled and crackled and I love this. So I'm going to take this coloration, this kind of texture, and I'm going to create something other than a bird. When I was thinking about these colors specifically, they reminded me, of course, fall. That's what's happening here. But it reminded me of pears. We have a couple pear trees that are just laden with fruit this year. And I love the color here, but I also like the touch of green here and then this touch of purple up here. Again, let me bring that closer. Look at that color palette. Isn't it gorgeous? See the little green areas here? So you can see it's got gold and it's got some oranges. It's got some purples. It's even got some little blush there on the cheek. And I do love this turquoise next to it. But I'm going to focus on this kind of concept. Now, I don't know how I'm going to create these lines. I was thinking about marker first, like a fine line pen. And then I started thinking how I'm going to paint it. And what I really want to do is do layering first. So I think I'm going to layer paint and then I will probably come back with pencil because I've been enjoying doing pencil marks lately in my work. And I think that that would be a really nice way to handle this treatment of the texture. And for that, let me show you what the Addison and Sedgwick palette looks like. This is the palette of colors, and I just bought some random colors, really, because I like their names. I have two metallics down here. They're really pretty, but I will not be using the metallics. I bought them because of this color, the hot dog. I really loved this one. This is the Macintosh. I love this. Look at this granulating color here. Isn't that beautiful? That's called Virginia. I like this kind of purplish color and I really liked this blue color. So we're going to have fun playing with all of these little colors and see what I can do with them to get me to this kind of point. I'm using my favorite palette, the Bowerbird. It's got a little shell on the front and then these quarter in the back just split into four even sections. And I'm going to start by mixing this hot dog color because I love this hot dog color. <laughs> it's just a funny color. I love the name. I'm going to mix a little bit of this Sarasota color. It's kind of a, think of it as a beige or like a really almost deep flesh tone. And then I want to bring in some of this golden delicious color. Now this is really bright for my taste. So I want to see what that Sarasota and it will make if they blend together. I want it to become duller. 
Yeah, that's a better golden for me. I also want to try the yellow and the hot dog color to see what color I get there. Ooh, that's pretty too. It's a little more on the orange blush side. That's beautiful. I want to try the Virginia by itself. That's that purplish color that really granulates a lot. And then I want to try the green. This is crab apple green. I want to see what the purple color and the green will do together. Let's see if I can kind of get a brownish color. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that darkness. So now I've got light to dark, and that's exactly what I need for this picture. And I'm going to add some of the hot dog color to the Virginia and see what kind of color we can get there. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So it's got a little more pink than this one. See how more the purple that is? So by adding this hot dog color there, we get that coloration, which is beautiful. Just drawing a pear. Pear is just a little circle up there with a bigger circle on the bottom. I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from this side, so I want to keep this side a little lighter, and this is where I'm going to add my deep areas, my shadows. So I'm going to start with the cat's tongue. If you don't know what a cat's tongue is, it is wider here and then goes to this really lovely point, but look how thin it is. So it's meant to hold a lot of water and a lot of paint in the belly of the brush, which is this area here, but yet let you get to some sharp points if you need to with the point of the brush. So I'm gonna go really light with this first air coating, and then I'm gonna use the Sarasota. I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow and the Sarasota just to brighten it up in a couple areas here. Trying to keep it all wet at the same time. Come with some more Sarasota and a little bit of hot dog with that because now I want it to be a little pinker at the bottom here. Gonna splash it. Because I know I want that side to be a little darker, especially with this like dark red kind of hot doggy color. Add that and add a little bit down here. See how I kind of pulled it down? Now that's to make the shape of the pear come out and in so that you know that it's shaped round. And this side is looking kind of bare now or kind of colorless since I added that other color over there. Since I added that dark, I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow over here. Just add a little bit of that coloration. Now I'm going to take the point of this brush with that dark mix I made up there and do my stem. Gonna splash again. I'm splashing for added texture because I like it to bloom. If you don't like it to bloom, don't splash, but I love the texture it adds. 
I'm going to take just a damp brush now and I'm going to sweep a little bit of this edge off here and a little bit down here. I just want it to be lighter in those two areas. I'm going to do that again. So press and drag in, press and drag in. Now we've got some standing puddles. You see that? So these areas I'm going to let dry just a little bit and then I'm going to splash them again because I like the texture and right now it's not giving me any texture because it's too wet. If I had salt, I could drop salt in there. That's perfect time for that. I'm going to be using a pencil now. This is a uh, graph gear number three. So you can see that it says 0.3 there. So it's a fairly light lead. And I'm just going to start putting little cracks in there, a little glazing. not going to have it everywhere, but I do want it in some spots so that it adds a lot of interest, especially down here in the darks and then down here in the lights as well. Vary the sizes for interest. So you've got some small ones and some nice big ones. See the little marks? So we're going to fill some of those with little pieces of color. Now I want the everything now to be brighter and a little more colorful so not so muted because remember as we saw here on this bird see so think of we've done the under layer that's it so now we're going to start building up all these little different color bits pieces and make them all just a little different from each other i'm going to go in with hot dog first because that's my favorite color <laughs> For this, I'm going to go around the shapes first. So now what I'm going to do is clean off my brush, dab it on paper towel so it's just water on my brush now, and I'm going to soften this edge. So by that, I'm just laying water right next to it, kind of pulling it out. So you see how it blended really nice. I'm going to do that now with that Virginia color, which is my, that darkness. And remember, I liked it with a little bit of the hot dog to give it a little more color. I want to make sure they're different. I think I can go a little bit more of the Virginia color in there. I like that. Look how dark that is. Again, I'm going to rinse my brush, blot it on paper towel. Where these two meet up, I'm just going to soften with a little bit of hot dog there. Okay. <laughs> I love the way that looks. So let's go with that bright yellow. Brush and water, soften that out. See how each layer is building the color and that's what I'm wanting to try to do is make it just a little bolder. Remember that piece had a little bit of green in it, so I'm going to go with some green and add a little bit of yellow just to make it a little lighter green. I want to add some green down here at the bottom. I want to add a little bit up here, make sure that's not wet anymore.
dampening my brush. This area down here I want to connect with a little bit of that Virginia and hot dog because I do want that to be nice and deep down here. Splashing just a little because I do love the splashing texture and I don't want that to get too solid. So now I'm going to take those same colors that I just added the darks with and we're going to color in some of these circles. See how each layer is adding to it? It's exactly what I'm looking for. I kind of like that one empty actually. If you feel like they get too dark, all you need to do is take a paper towel and put your brush down on them and kind of blot. See how it lifts the color? I kind of liked them dark. <laughs> I want to add some of that Virginia now, the Virginia and the hot dog together. Let's have a look at this guy. That looks pretty interesting. With my liner brush, I'm going to come in and add some gray circles. So I'm going to use the green and a little bit of the hot dog. Let's see what color we get there. It's kind of a nice gray. I'm going to water it down so it's a little thinner. It's lighter than the pencil, so it gives you a different look. You can see the difference here. These are painted and these are drawn, so they're much bolder. These are the painted ones and these are the drawn ones. So you can see the heavier lead. Look how interesting that is. Isn't that pretty? A lot of beautiful layers. You can see what the splashing does is it disrupts some of the solid color. And then adding those little splashes of circular color is really, really nice to that. So there's my textured pair. Inspired by Bird Nerd. <laughs> Let me bring in the original photo there. See all that beautiful little pattern and texture. And then there is my rendition of it. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. And this is why I like looking at weird books to find different things to do in your sketchbook. Who knew Collage Soup Bird Nerd would have so much to keep me busy in my sketchbook with? But I can tell you, I've been playing for days and it's just really a lot of fun. So get inspired by something off of your bookshelf today. Look at it with new and exciting eyes and endless possibilities. Who knows what it will have you creating. If you're inspired by today's video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.